Hey folks, John with Complete Technology Solutions, your friend in the computer business. Now today I've got a little bit of an update and uh, a really cool project. Something, I told you guys something neat was coming and um, we're finally here. So, um, on the last video we had sort of an epic fail on a donation computer. Uh, as it turns out that computer was well beyond repair with any you know reasonable return on it. There was no, uh, there's no reason you want to dump that much money into a client that old. So, uh, I got another donation box, however, just yesterday, and it did contain a very, very interesting computer. Uh, we'll be doing another video on that one. I have not even fired it up. I want to do all of this live. You know, I, I kind of dig the surprises. That way you and I are sharing it together, and you kind of get to see what I see. So, but that's not what today's video is about. Today, we are going to be unboxing and building a Creality... Ender 3 3D printer. Now, if you've never seen one of these things, they are wonderful. Uh, I actually own five 3D printers. They're pretty much going all the time, making uh, different things like uh, cases for my raspberries, uh, little designs. My son actually makes cars for car shows. A uh, little bit of everything. We've been working with the printers for quite a while now. So, full disclosure, this is not the first time I've actually seen this one, nor the first time I will have assembled it. Uh, it's not that difficult but it's a lot of fun. Stay with me and we're gonna be right back with you and we're gonna get this started. Okay folks, so let's go ahead and crack open this printer. Now while I'm doing this, I'll go ahead and let you know the, uh, the Creality 3, the Ender 3 is probably one of the, uh, what I would consider the best entry level uh, printers that you can get out there. They're inexpensive, uh, they're relatively easy to assemble even if you've never done it before, and they just flat work. Now, with 3D printers, that's one thing you're going to experience. Occasionally, they'll work great for the first couple of prints, and then you're going to get some issues with them. So, that's one of those things you kind of got to deal with. So, alright. This one, on the other hand, when they work and they're calibrated, they work forever. They just do what they do. So. All right, let's take a look at what we got in the box here. A little extra foam, get rid of that. All right, right off the bat here, we've got the manual for, actually, this is the instruction manual for installation. Even though there are a couple of language challenges, it's a very, very good document. It, it, it's a one page, so it really is good. You can actually assemble this with the one page. All right, gonna go in here. The next thing we've got over here on the side is the power supply for the printer. Now these are, for the most part, they're, they're pretty much assembled. You'll have to do a couple of things with the, uh, uh, the uprights and the cross beam, um, as well as where you mount the filament. We're going to talk about that a little later. So here is the power supply that comes with it. This is actually the LCD board and the control board that controls all of the, uh, uh, the inputs for the motors and everything else. The actual motor board where the stepper motor controls are and everything else are mounted in the, the uh, printer itself. And we'll get to that too. I'll probably show you guys where it is. We may not crack it open today, but I will show you where it is. But this is what actually interacts with it. Uh, allows you to access all the menus, preheat the filament, uh, load or unload to print from the SD card, uh, or even to print from a Raspberry, which once again, we'll get to at a later point in time. That's another project. All right, you've got a couple of arms here. And we're gonna go ahead and get the printer itself out of here. And as you can see, this is actually pretty light. Now, when you pull the printer out, you want to be careful because the print head is actually attached via a cable. And I've done this before where you'll pull the printer out and the print head goes crashing to the ground. That's never a good thing. Now, to identify this printer to let you know, when they refer to the front and the back, now in this particular case, um, the logo on here, as Stumpy is, is picking up, I'm going to verify that. Yeah, the logo is actually correct. Um, the front the back, I should say, has the motor on it. This is the stepper motor that pushes the plate back and forth this direction. So this is the back of the printer. This is the front of the printer. Remember that for installation. That way you'll know when you look at the picture, you can compare it. It'll match up. It's really easy. All right? And the next thing we've got in here. Now this is the extruder motor. This is the, actually the motor that pulls the filament in. And this is the motor that will actually move it up and down. So you've got an up and down motion, a side to side motion, and this moves it back and forth. All right, three different motors that drive this. All right, 
Then on the bottom, this motor is the motor that actually has a, a large screw that sits in it. And this is actually what will move the entire thing up as it's going. So as it makes, it builds the print, it'll slowly move up. This is the motor that actually moves it up. You get a bag of goodies here. Um, Every time you do this, I will tell you that they do actually ship extra parts. So if you have extra parts left over, you didn't do anything wrong, perfectly normal. So, extra parts. This actually goes onto the cross member across the top. We'll get to that later. Once again, extra goodies. This is actually for the filament. And it'll end up mounting in here. This will be up on top of the printer, and that's how the filament is. We'll get to that later as well. They give you a little putty scraper, which is actually what you'll use to get your prints off of the plate. Um, there are other options available for that as well that make that a lot easier, so we'll, we'll talk about that one. Standard PC power cable, nothing special to that. Now this bag of goodies, uh, in this particular case you've got one of the, uh, uh, the guides. So when the motor hits the bottom, it's going to hit a little switch. That switch tells it you you're at the bottom, don't try to go any further. Uh, the motors, are, uh, the guides rather for this motor are already installed on the printer, uh, as well as the, the one for the, uh, uh, the left and right. This is the one for the up and down motion, and it will be installed on the bottom of one of the control arms. So we'll, so we'll get to that one too. And the last thing in this box, these are the updates, the supports that go on the left and the right hand side. And that large thing you just uh, saw fall by me here is actually the screw I was talking about. Now it is actually shielded inside this little rubber protective case. So you do not, <laughs> the first time I built one of these, I fought with this forever. You don't leave this on here when you build a printer. And you would think that it'd be pretty obvious by the picture, and it is if you look at the picture. So, all right, so that's what we're gonna need to get started. So hang tight for a second, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, start putting her together. Okay, folks, back with you. Now what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've unwrapped everything. I've got it all unpackaged and laid out in the, uh, kind of in the order that you're going to be installing these. Um, it occurred to me that since I, uh, I've done a few of these, I don't actually have to refer to the instructions, but since there will probably be people out there that want to purchase one of these and follow the instructions to build it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stair step, go piece by piece on the instructions, step by step, so you can see uh, exactly what steps to take and what order to do them in. All right? So, I know that the first step is going to be to mount the upper control arms right here, but we are going to look at the instructions together, and I am going to try, assuming, Stump assuming Stumpy is cooperating. He was not cooperating right there. Guys, by the way, sooner or later, Stumpy's got to go. So if any of you in the um, description field down here can recommend another close view camera up here, uh, this is one we've had around for years. It just happens to be the one I use for this. but. Uh, any suggestion will be greatly appreciated, I assure you. So, all right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to crack this open. Now, the, the, a couple of things that I really enjoy about this particular kit, I'm going to show this. The screws are actually numbered on the bag with exactly what they look like. On the actual bags, when you open up the parts bags, the screws are also correspondingly numbered. All right, so for instance, if you look on here, you'll see the M5 by 25. Well, you'll see over here, it'll tell you M5 by, by 25, and you'll be able to match it up so you'll know where it'll go. They're all labeled like that. So, we're going to be using them. So, all right, I'm going to try and set this right here so Stumpy can take a look at it as we're going, okay? So, step one is going to be to mount the cross arms. Now, the thing you want to remember, if the printer is facing you, like this printer is actually facing me, uh, when you're looking at the cross members, your power supply is going to be mounted right back here facing you. So on the right hand side, you're going to have two holes on one of the uprights. Those two holes are going to want to be mounted right here. If you mount them wrong and over here or something like that, the power supply won't fit. You'll have to take them all apart again. So you don't want to have to do that. So, all right. Uh, one other thing to note, the holes want to be on the inside. And you'll understand why here in just a second. Okay, now, uh, incidentally, the kit does come with a, a fairly decent set of tools. Uh, everything that you actually need to install, this is right here. So you got a bunch of different Allen wrenches, uh, a couple of wrenches that you'll actually use for the nozzle, which we'll get to here in just a little bit, and uh, a little screwdriver and a, a couple of little miscellaneous things. So, all right, so we're going to turn her up on her side here, and we're going to run these screws up through, making sure 
that you, uh, you keep that lock washer, which incidentally, in the bag, the lock washers are in there as well. Just go ahead and throw them out as well and push them up through. And you can go ahead and get both of them in place and be ready to go. Now, on the other side, you're going to take them out. Once again, verify, verify, verify. The holes are on the left-hand side and they're facing you, all right? All right, and you're gonna see that they actually fit into holes down there on the bottom. And get them started up and go on through. We're gonna go ahead and repeat this on the other side and be right back with you. All right, now that we have the, uh, the two uprights mounted here, and I did want to make note to show you guys, is Stumpy still with us? Stumpy is not with us. Okay, so I did want to take note here, and I've got Stumpy back on here for us so we can see. Um, on the left-hand side when you mount the upright, there's going to be a small cable. Now, this is the cable that is actually going to connect to that sensor that, uh, that tells it when it's at the lowest possible position. So you want to make sure that it's on the back here. If you mess up, it's not a big deal. You can kind of fish it back through, but it's best if you go ahead and mount it so that it's facing you when you build the printer. Okay? All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and mount the power supply. To mount the power supply, we're going to go ahead and use a couple of the M4 by 20s, all right? Remember I told you guys that they do actually always include extra parts well. For the power supply, you need two of these, and as Stumpy can see, assuming she's still working with us, they do give you three. So you end up with an extra one in there. Um, I will tell you that if you're doing this for a long period of time, hold on to all your spares, because you never know what you're going to end up needing, all right? Uh, this Allen wrench is actually a little bit smaller than the other one. And the way the power supply mounts is exactly opposite of the way these mount here. So you want to put the screws in from the front to the back, from the front to the back. Your power supply has two corresponding screw holes, here and here. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to mount this to the back, line up your screw holes just like that, and screw them in place. And I usually try to get a turn or two on one, get down to the bottom one, get a turn or two on that one. All right, we'll get this mounted, be right back with you. All right, so as you can see, we now have our power supply mounted, nice and sturdy. I'm gonna turn this little bit, see if Stumpy can actually get a picture of it. And as you can see, the screws are mounted through the, the rails. So nice and solid, not gonna go anywhere. Now, the next part you're gonna mount is actually the control panel that we were talking about. Now the control panel, right here, show Stumpy, okay, actually mounts using two of the M5 by 8 screws. Now, you'll actually use these in a couple of different places, so once you crack these open, keep them together because you will be using them again. All right. And it takes two different screws, okay? Now, uh, good. now, when you mount the control board, on the back you're going to see three connections for EXP 1, 2, and 3, okay? There is a ribbon cable right here, underneath it, and you want to connect it to EXP3. Now, if you go ahead and do this now, you'll save yourself a lot of hassle at the end uh, trying to get it plugged in, okay? So it's right here, and it goes into EXP3, and there is, you cannot really plug it in the wrong way because you've got a little notch on it, all right? EXP3. Now, if you look here, you've got two offset screw holes. I don't know if Stumpy's getting this or not. Those two offset screw holes actually go right there, and this is where you will use your two M5 screws. All right, so now we have our control panel mounted. Um, I want to apologize to you again, folks. We have lost Stumpy again. Um, I think this is the last video that Stumpy's going to work in. I, I think uh, this, this is the last straw. So <laughs> hopefully the next video we'll have another camera in here. Well, actually, no, hopefully we will. I'm not going to do this anymore. Um, and there are going to be chopped bits and cuts from this video because she come on, turn off whenever we want to. So we'll get back to that. All right. So at this point, and, and it's going to be tougher to follow instructions, obviously, because Stumpy's not on. So you'll just kind of have to trust me that that's the stage that we just happen to be at at this point. So, all right. Now, we were talking about the switch that controls the up and down motion. I'm going to try to turn this so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing here. All right. This is that little switch we were talking about. Now, this mounts very easily. This has got a couple of the screws that actually have uh, the one-way nuts on them. So when you put them in and you tighten it, they'll turn sideways inside of this uh, uh, railing here to, to hold it and secure it into place. Um, and all you have to do is loosen them up a tiny bit. You do not want to loosen them all the way up so that now these nuts are free here, all right? And what you want to do is you want to line it up so that the nuts go into this railing vertically, 
like that. And there's a notch on the bottom to where this slides all the way down against the bottom, okay? So you want it nice and tight in there. And you can watch it internally there. As you turn it, the little nuts will turn sideways inside the rail. That's how you know you have a good connection. They will literally turn sideways and lock against the rail, okay? okay so we're going to secure that. All right. And this little plug, it's one of the one-way Phoenix plugs you've seen everywhere else, and it just goes in one direction right into that switch. All right. First piece of wiring complete. That's great. Well, actually, second piece. The control would probably be the first for the control panel. That would be the second one. So we're moving right along. All right, so the next step. We're going to go ahead and turn the printer around so I can show you where. Now, once again, the front is still facing me. Power supply is over here. Down here is where you're, what's called the stepper motor. This is where one of the stepper motors is going to mount. All right? That's this little motor here. Now, as you can see, hopefully you can, but Stumpy did. I know it's a little tougher. Uh, you've actually got some recessed holes in here, and it's going to mount directly to the rail right there. There are actually holes for it, okay? So what you'll do is, uh, now, one thing about this, do not over-tighten this, and you'll understand why as we go along here in just a second, okay? Uh, typically, I'll go ahead and put the screws in, all right? Then, since it's recessed, as you can see, it kind of like goes down in there. Go ahead and get your Allen wrench that fits it. And get it lined up on the nut and set her in place. Now you'll be able to see the screw holes in the railing as you mount it in place. And get one side started and move to the other side. Once again, and I cannot stress this enough, do not over tighten this, okay? You just want it snug and secure so it's not going to wiggle around on you. All right, the next phase is we're going to go ahead and we're going to mount this big long screw here, all right? goes right here. Now there are two set screws here. The only one you're concerned with for this purpose is the top one, which is already by default loose, and hence the fact that it goes right in place. All right. Once you get it in, you're going to want to go ahead and secure that screw. And make sure that your screw is nice and tight and isn't going to come out. You also don't want any extra motion, so that's why this one is particularly important right now. that. Now, do you remember a minute ago when I said how important it was that you did not over tighten the screw? Take a look. Can you see in this, hopefully the camera's picking it up, you see how the screw is actually leaning to the left, okay? Well, in your case, to the right. All right. That's because one of the screws is a little offset. So what you have to do is you have to unscrew these just a tiny bit to loosen them up. You adjust this, and you can actually adjust this by eye. It's not going to hurt anything. And then you secure it back down again. But that's why it was very important to not over tighten those screws so that you can line this up. Um, this has to be straight up and down and straight this direction. If not, what will happen is it will bind up. Uh, and then your print will work great until it gets about here, and then the printer will lie. So you don't want that. All right. So we've got the screw mounted. We've got the control panel on. We've got the first couple of things wired. Uh, the next step in this process is to get the actual travel arm taken care of. Now, this is the arm that uh, uh, the actual uh, print head is going to go back and forth on. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and move the printer aside. And we're going to bring up the travel arm here. All right. Now, when you look at the two remaining arms, okay, one of them has got two holes here, two holes here. And you'll notice it is shorter. That is not the travel arm. That's going to end up mounting up here. Okay, but we'll get to that here in just a little bit. This is the travel arm. Okay, you'll be able to tell you've got three holes on one side, three holes on the other side, and they're offset from each other. All right, so the next thing to do, um, remember we have the printer moved back here. We are actually going, this is the actual print head, and we're going to go ahead and get it mounted onto the travel arm and get the travel arm totally configured and then slide it down into place before we install the top panel, or excuse me, the top rail. Okay. So, here's how we're going to do that. The process for this is actually pretty simple. First of all, you're going to go ahead and take this black, looks like kind of like a triangle, okay? Now, this can be kind of a pain in the butt the first time you install one of these. When you look at this rail, you'll notice one side, and Stumpy isn't picking it up, has these notched cutouts. And these notched cutouts are where screws are actually going to fit into them to go through to other objects on the other side. So that nothing is exposed on this side because a wheel is constantly rolling up and down this. So, We'll go ahead and get this mounted, and I'll show you how it mounts. One thing I did want to mention, folks, 
there is one tricky part about this. Remember, we were talking about the inset screws, okay? Um, the cross member in particular is one that's important. You've got two screws here, and you've got this big screw that's already screwed into one of the guide wheels, okay? That's where this offset goes, on that big screw, okay? See how that sits? The reason you've got holes drilled is because you have to get a screw down through there, in that hole, all the way down to this bar on the bottom, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and get these two mounted, and I'll show you what we've got. Okay, folks, so as you can see, I've got the two screws mounted right here and right here, and they're actually just kind of loosely put in there. You can take your Allen wrench and go through the holes on the top to tighten these. These are the two biggest pain in the butt screws right here. Uh, once you get them, though, the rest of the installation is pretty simple, but you want to make sure that you get those in there good and that you get the lock washer on it. That's important because uh, this is one of the high stress parts right here that actually takes a lot of the motion and vibration. So that's why it's very important to make sure that lock washer is locked on there good and tight. All right, so now we got our extruder and our stepper motor that's going to take this up and down, and it's all mounted onto the guide rail. All right, now the next step actually can seem a little out of step, but there's a reason that they do it this way, all right? So the next step is actually going to be to mount the drive belt, all right? Now the belt looks pretty much like any drive belt you've ever seen. Notches on one side, flat on the other side. The difference is this is not a big circle, okay? So you see it's actually one long belt, okay? See that? So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to run this through on top of the rail, through to the drive motor, all right? And then from the drive motor back through the other way. Now you want to be gentle doing this because you are actually going to be putting this belt on the teeth of the drive motor. So you don't want to mess up your belt by pulling too much or, or uh, you know, fighting with it. You want it to be, it should fit on there nice and just like that, nice and loosely, all right? This end will wrap around this direction and then just set these here together, all right? Looks a little clumsy. You'll understand why here in just a second. The next part of this procedure is actually going to be to get the print head on here. That's why you put the belt on first because the print head writes over the top of the belt, all right? Hang tight. Show you what that looks like. All right, guys, as you can see, I now have the print head on there. It just slides on there, but as you can see, it's over the top of the belt on the top and the bottom. So that's kind of important you know that. Now, on the bottom of the print head, and I'm, I can't really show too much here. I'm going to try here. There are two notches, all right? That's where the belt is actually going to connect into the print head on both sides, okay? That's critically important because that's what pulls this back and forth, all right? Hold tight one second. I'll show you what we got. Okay, guys, so we're back with you. Now, I'm going to try to get a good a shot of this as I can since, uh, you know what, in fact, let me see if I can get Stumpy to come on for just a second. This might be one of those situations where it'd be good to see. Um, the belt is wound around across the motor here, just kind of hanging over the edge here, and it's, it's clipped on this side of the motor, of, excuse me, of the print head, and on this side of the print head. Now, let's see if I can get Stumpy to give us at least a couple seconds shot of this so I can show you guys. There you go. So, the belt's going through. It's clipped here. And it's clipped here, all right? The next phase is to put the tensioner on. Now, that's actually the easiest part. But you have to do this in order because if you don't do it in order, then you'll end up with your print head on backwards or upside down or whatever else. So you want to stay in this order. Screwed around the back, your print head on the front facing you, okay? Now, the tensioner looks like a little pulley. It's got two more of those little tension screws that we were talking about, all right? And you want to loosen those up just a little bit, just like last time. And what you're going to do is you're going to take them and you're going to prefer to face the, uh, the, the pulley part backwards, okay? You'll understand why when you see it. All right, so as you can see, you've got some slack here, all right? What you want to do is put the wheel in here and rotate it up into place. Put your two little screws in there like that. And now you're going to want to secure this. Now, um, this is where you're going to set the tension. Now, you don't want to pull this thing ungodly tight. You know, the idea isn't to break this. The idea is that you, you want it to be a little looser than a guitar string. So taut, but not super, super tight, okay? Because you don't want to stress out the motor. So what I usually do is I'll put this on here, and I'll just push it out with my thumb about that much, all right? Go ahead and get one screw tightened up. And then go ahead and secure your other one down, making sure that those do go sideways. That's critically important because otherwise it won't hold when you tighten it up. It'll just slide right out of place. And those are good. 
Sorry about that, folks. You probably heard my phone ringing. Inevitable. No matter what you're doing, uh, about the time you need it to be totally silent, someone's going to call you. So, All right. So back with us. So what we've got is we've got the motor mounted. We've got the extruder mounted. Stepper motor's mounted. This slides nicely now. Control connected to the belt. And we're all tensioned up and ready. All right? So about time to get to some fun parts. The last thing we have to mount on this is actually this Y bracket that will allow it to mount to this rail. Once again, same basic principle on this one as you had before. You've got two mounting screws on here, and you've got one big giant hole. Okay, that's the cutout. That's how you'll always know if you're mounted the right direction. Uh, when you put this on here, you'll see that the hole, and I'll, I'll show you in a couple different ways here, will only mount one direction. So there, see that, that this screw is going down into that hole, and it lines up those two screw holes. All right? So I'm going to go ahead and get this mounted. Be right back with you. Back with you. So, now we've got our guide arm mounted, we've got our control mounted, we've got our print head mounted, we've got our extruder motor mounted, and we've got our X step, uh, mounted, uh, stepper motor mounted. So, we're going to go ahead and bring the printer back over here. The next step is the cool step. We're actually going to start assembling this, all right? Now, one thing you're going to want to do, on the top of your extruder motor, there are two small screws right here. You're going to want to loosen those a little bit. I'll, I'll tell you why here in just a second. So just give them, a, just unscrew them just a teeny bit so that they're not tight, all right? What this does is, this is actually the guide for this screw. If those screws are tight, then what will happen is you'll bind this up, all right? So, cable over the back, line everything up. These two go in here, these two go in here, and the screw will go right into that screw hole right there. And now look. I can thread this manually, and as you can see, it's starting to go down on its own. Now, you can, it's actually very easy to tell that you've got this in alignment too. Uh, this screw, once you get this in here, should turn very easily. And as you can see, it'll pull the whole control arm down. All right? So that's how you know you're in there good. Um, usually I'll run this all the way down, make sure we don't have any tension. And it's feeling pretty good so far. Looking good. Yep, no tension. All right. So, the, the last face is going to be the top bar, the cross member here, that adds support to the print. I'm going to go ahead and get that installed, and we'll show you what it looks like. All right, guys. So, we've got two screws on this side, two screws on this side, mounted down there. Now, the whole thing is nice and stable. Now, the easiest way to tell if you've got this correct... Um, once this is all mounted and everything is balanced correctly and, and everything is tight, um, you should literally be able to move this entire motor up and down without having to force it, all right? So I'm just going to put a little pressure here and I'm going to push up. And as you can see, the motors move freely, just like that, like that. Okay? So there's no tension on it at all. It just moves freely. Uh, that's how you know that you've got everything balanced and uh, uh, adjusted correctly. Now, at this point, you can go ahead and, as long as it's moving freely, you can secure these screws just a tiny bit on that screw. You do not want these to be very tight, though, because if you do, once again, you can't bind up the screw. So we don't want to do that. All right, there we go. So let's make sure we're still free. Still free. Still free. So everything's moving perfectly now. All right, the next step. On your print, or excuse me, your extruder here, you're actually going to have... A couple of these little brass grommets. Now, we were talking about the wrenches that they include a minute ago. They do give you spares of these. Once again, I'm going to see if I can get Stumpy to stay on long enough to get us a picture of these. All right. So this is what they look like. All right. And these little blue spacers, they'll go in place as well. So what you want to do is you want to screw one of these right into the receptacle hole. I'm going to try to get a shot of that right here. Now this is where your, your filament is going to come through this direction and through this hole. You want to make sure that this is actually butted all the way down and you want to secure it, but you don't want it super, super tight, okay? Because you, you can't actually break this. Um, this is actually plastic. They have an upgrade um, to this that's aluminum, which I typically, that's one of the first upgrades I do to this printer. So, but as long as you're not, you know, messing with it and, and banging on it, it'll be okay for now. So, all right. You want to take this white tube and you're going to push down on this receptacle and you're going to push it in all the way. Now you want this to bottom out all the way in there, okay? And you can feel when it bottoms out. Then you're going to want to pull out that little 
guide and you'll insert one of these little blue spacers right here. That will secure your uh, feed tube into the extruder. Um, now, I, I cannot tell you this, uh, enough, this is one of the places that will cause print failures more than most places. Um, if, you, uh, if this is spaced out too much, the filament will bind and then what will happen is it will keep printing but no filament will be coming out. Um, you want to make sure that's secured and you want to make sure that tubing is all the way in. That's, that's critically important. So, all right, the very last step, we're going to go ahead and plug in all of the wiring on this. Now, fortunately, on this printer, everything is coded by letter. It's very, very simple. Um, on a lot of the other ones, like I've got a couple of Delta printers and all that, all the plugs look alike. So you have to know what you're going to, and if you don't know what you're going to, you have to check the voltage on it and make sure you're not sending too much through it and so on and so forth. But in this case, we know what it is. So we're going to go ahead and hook this up. And I'm going to try to keep this up here so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. All right? First plug is going to be the power for the power supply. And it just snaps right in there. After the power supply, on this ribbon cable, you're going to see that you've got three connectors. Now, you've got three devices here that are fairly close to each other, and they all use a power connection. That's a pretty easy way to tell this. You've got a motor here, you've got a motor here, and you've got a switch here. Okay, this is the switch that tells it to stop left and right. All right? The motor connections are large, and they are labeled. All right? So you can see you've got an E and an X. All right? So what you want to do is you want to refer to your guide if you don't know what they are. But if you do know where they are, it's actually pretty common. Uh, they, they're not labeled on the motors themselves, though. So, but in this particular case, I do know that E actually goes to the extruder motor. And I know that X actually goes to the stepper motor. And I know that the small connection here actually goes to this little switch. Now, this is a little tricky. I know Stumpy's toast, but we're going to have to look in here. There's a small hole here back in the back. That's where this one plugs in. It's actually for that switch. It can only go in one way, so you can't really damage it. Just kind of get that switch in there and click her in place. There we go. All right. This motor is actually, and once again, they actually put these to a length where you can't really make a mistake. It's pretty cool. This is the Z motor. As you can see, it's right next to this motor right here. So it's going to go on the bottom. And the final motor we're going to plug in is actually going to be for the Y stepper. And it is going to be the Y cable, because it's Y stepper. All right, so that's it. All right, at this point, your printer is completely set up and ready to go. Now, um, there are a few things that you're going to want to do. Um, first of all, and I'll turn this around here and show you. There's a little uh, uh, clip right here. You're going to want to clip this cable in here. You'll understand why when this thing starts moving around. Uh, this goes back and forth very quickly. This, the, the base moves forward and backwards very quickly. And as it moves up, occasionally your cables back here can bind. So you are going to want to secure them, but you've got to remember, you've got to leave travel on these cables because they do move. All right? That's very important. Um, what we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to fire it up and make sure that we've got power and that... Uh, it turns on, and we'll go ahead and we need to do a, um, um, an alignment on the bed. I'll show you guys how to do that as well. And then we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and fire up our first test print. Hey, folks. So we discovered that Stumpy's batteries were toast. I don't think that's the extent of its problems, but we'll get back to that. Uh, we're grabbing some batteries right now, but in the interim, I want to show you. Uh, the last thing to install is actually the filament holder. That's what this is. Uh, exactly the same way, you've got these little screws that you want to put on very lightly through the hole. And the same thing on the other side. Like that. And what you're going to do is you're going to mount this right up here. Okay, folks, Stumpy's back with us again. So um, I don't think it's going to pick up this screen because it's kind of bright blue, and that tends to kind of wig out the camera here. So, But we're going to go ahead and align this. I'm going to uh, give you a, a basic idea how to do it. If you get your own printer, you'll be able to see it yourself. But when you push this button, you're going to go down here to Prepare, and you're going to go to Auto Home. What that's going to do is it's going to move the printer down to the bottom left corner, all right, and lower the printer. 
Now we're going to turn the printer off. Okay. Now different printers have different ways to level them. All right. This one in particular, there are wheels on the bottom of the bed. All right. The best way to do this is actually with a business card or even a regular piece of paper will work. We're going to use the guarantee card in this case. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the printer over, and we're going to start in the bottom left corner here. All right. Hopefully Stumpy's getting this. All right, the idea is you want to slide the card under. If it's too tight like that, you want to tighten this up so that it will pull down the bed. There you go. And you want just a little bit of drag on the paper. That's what you're looking for. All right. See how tight that got? All right. You want to move to the other side of the bed. Just a little tight. All right, there we go. All right. And same thing with the back. You want to move the bed back. And these typically, they will come in the completely uh, uh, full up position. So you will actually have to pull the bed down some in order to move it around. That's actually totally normal. All right. I'll try to get the camera out here so you guys can see it as well. All right. You want just a little bit of drag. And move it to the other corner. Now, typically, you're going to want to do this two or three times to get it perfect. All right. The idea is. You want just enough room to get drag on the paper. That will cause your prints to bind. Believe it or not, when you're 3D printing, that's one of the biggest problems you're going to have is prints not binding. So you will learn to do this as you go. Like you see now the back was perfect, and this is a little loose now, so we're going to loosen it up a tad. There we go. And move over here. And loosen it up a tad. And you'll start to feel just a little bit of pressure. There we go. One more time. There we go. We're good there. A little tight here. We're going to drop it just a little bit. There we go. And back in the corner. And this is why you want to do this a couple times because it's going to, you're, you're shifting a whole thing like this. So it takes a little bit of time to get it perfect. All right. Once you've got the bed perfect, Now you're ready to do your test print. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, they do give you a little teensy piece of filament and a micro SD card. Now we're going to go ahead and do this. Um, we're going to fire up the printer again. Now, I want to show you guys how to load the, uh, uh, the filament into it because that actually is something you're going to have to do. All right. In the package, they also give you a nifty set of blue cutters. Now, you will, uh, I'm pretty sure that most of you guys out there probably have a flush set of nippers like this. Uh, it makes loading your filament a whole lot easier, that much I can tell you for sure. All right, so you want to hit the button, and you want to go down to prepare, all right? And you want to go prepare PLA. Now, there are different kinds of plastic out there. Uh, there's PLA, PLA+, Plus, PETG, ABS. They all have different physical characteristics, they all print at different temperatures, and they will all give you different results. So um, as you're printing and you get into this, you're going to learn a lot of this stuff as you go along. So, all right. All right, now, in order to load filament, now, if Stumpy is catching this, I'm actually going to grab him and try to focus on this little window here. Hold on a second here. Yeah, I can do that. All right. see if that will stay there for us. <coughs> this kid, I'm stumpy, has gone, man. I'm so done with this camera. Did he die? Who knows? Yeah, we had stumpy for a while, all right? Okay, so I've got Stumpy pointed at this. Hopefully you guys can actually see this. Um, what you've got here is this is the temperature of your extruder, which is where your filament's going to come through, and this is the temperature of your bed. Now when you go to prepare, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to heat up your extruder, and then it's going to heat up your bed. All right. When the extruder reaches 175 degrees, 
you can go ahead and load your filament at that point. Now, to load the filament, now normally this would come on big old giant spools, but in this case they give you this little bitty test piece, all right? And we're going to go ahead and use it in the spirit of things. So, what you want to do is take the edge of your filament, and we were talking about how necessary these little clippers are. You want to clip it into a little point, all right? The reason you do that is it'll make it a whole lot easier to feed through the extruder, all right? So, you'll put your spool up here. You're going to have a hole right here that's going, you're going to feed your filament into, and it's going to go through a pulley and a gear. You'll actually be able to see that when you're in front of it. You want to push this little lever down to open it up and push it through there. Now, as you're pushing it through there, you're going to feel that it's going to go down into the tube. All right. And you can see it actually going down the tube there, and it will hit the extruder. Now, when it hits the extruder, you put a little bit of pressure on it. You're going to notice coming out of the bottom of the extruder is actually going to be some of the filament. All right. That's how you know that you are actually prepped and ready to go. Now, the Ender does actually have a couple of uh, a free little test prints that they include with it, uh, one of which is a really cute little dog. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start this test print. Um, I'm not going to let it run. This print takes about five hours to do. But what it is going to do is it's going to go ahead and lay us down our first little pattern, and then we'll know that at least we're aligned correctly. Hang tight. That's a perfect bead right there. Is that neat? Alright folks, so here we are. We are about uh, five hours later and I've actually uh, already taken this off and cleaned it up a little bit. But just to give you an idea of what it's going to print, this is a little test elephant. And this is a cool elephant because it prints all in one piece, but the neat thing it'll do is when you lift it up, it'll stand on its own legs. Now that is a really cool print right there. And that's one of the tests that you can actually do with it. Now, just to give you an idea, um, I do actually 3D print all of the cases for some of my raspberries. Got a little Commodore right there. Got a little TARDIS there. A couple of tetrahedrons. Those are really, really cool, by the way. And up here, got one of my Death Stars. Now, this is actually printed in six different pieces, believe it or not. And then once you print it, you actually have to wire it up internally so you've got all of the lights. So, eventually, I'll be doing a video on all of my gaming systems, but for right now, just to kind of give you an idea of what we're talking about. That's uh, kind of a few of them that we can print. And I got a few more of them coming in as well. Thought you might get a kick out of that though, so you can see the little elephant. All right, folks. Well, listen, thank you very much for joining me on this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helps you if you are assembling one of these by yourself. And we will see you on a future video. Please do not forget to smash that like and subscribe button. Every like helps. Have a great night.